Welcome to Family Law Talk. Family Law Talk. Presented by Kirk Stangy of Stangy Law Firm, PC. Stangy Law Firm is a multi state family law firm. Now, here's your host, Kirk Stangy. Welcome to Family Law Talk. We have an interesting topic today. The topic is the impact of realistic estrangement on child custody matters. And this episode today is based on an article on our blog, FamilyLawHeadquarters.com, dated August 18th, 2024. And the title of that article is, What is Realistic Estrangement? So as a follow-up to the episode today, go on over to FamilyLawHeadquarters.com and read the article on a similar topic, which will give you a lot more information. But let's go ahead and jump on in. Uh, Most individuals have heard of the concept of parental alienation. So most individuals generally familiar with what this means. And for those of you that don't know what it means, what we're talking about here is a situation where one parent is essentially on a campaign to demean or defame the other parent to the kid. So this can be a very bad situation. It's very unfortunate. But in these cases, the parent who's being defamed or demeaned, I mean, generally they're an acceptable parent. Uh, They're a fit parent. Uh, They care about their kids, but based on the continued efforts of the other parent, uh, their relationship uh, with the kids ends up being harmed. And so this can happen all kinds of different ways. But I mean, in in terms of a campaign, we're talking about the parent just making repeated comments about the other parent that paint them in a bad light. Oftentimes they're telling the kids things that are untrue. Uh, talking with the kids inappropriately about the case itself if there's pending litigation, uh, maybe showing court pleadings to the kids or or telling the kids things the kids shouldn't really know, okay? So then over time, uh, the kids don't want to be with the parent who's been demeaned or defamed, and it's not because they're a bad parent. It's just because the other parent's been in their ear, been saying bad things to them over and over and over again over a continuous period of time. And, and one of the key words that, again, I wanna just stress is they're on a campaign, okay? Uh, Some parents fall short, some parents make some mistakes, maybe say some things they shouldn't say, but uh, to be somebody who's alienating the kids, we're talking about the parent being on a campaign. It's a continuous thing uh, where they are demeaning and defaming uh, the other parent, okay? Let's contrast that, though, with realistic estrangement. Oftentimes, when the kids don't wanna see a parent Uh, the courts or maybe a guardian ad litem, maybe the attorneys on the case, maybe they will assume that this is a case of parental alienation when it's not. And so the opposite of parental alienation is what is called realistic estrangement, all right? So this is the opposite of parental alienation. And when it exists, the similarity is that the kids don't want to see uh, that parent as well. So just like a a situation of alienation, the kids don't want to see the parent who's been demeaned or defamed, when there's realistic estrangement, the kids don't want to see a particular parent. But the big difference here is it's not because the other parent was demeaning or defaming the other parent to the kids. Instead, the issue is that the one parent's behavior is so outrageous over time around the kids that the kids don't want to be around that parent, but their reasons are justified. All right. So we're typically talking about situations where the parent's been physically abusive to the kids. Uh, Maybe they've been emotionally abusive to the kids and they've been this way for so long over such a period of time. The kids don't want to be around that parent, but it makes sense why they wouldn't want to be around them. It's not a situation where they are alienated from a parent who's acceptable. They don't want to be around a parent who, at the end of the day, is not acceptable, at least in their current uh, interactions with the kids, okay? So realistic estrangement, the exact opposite of parental alienation, and the reality of the situation is is that when kids don't want to see a parent in a divorce or custody case, right, they refuse to go, you know, maybe they don't jump in the car at the exchange to go with the other parent, or maybe they refuse to go. Uh, they run off so they're not there at the time of an exchange or maybe they go to the parents house and then they want to depart maybe if they're old enough to drive they jump in a car and drive to the other parents house right the issue is in these kinds of situations sometimes it's hard to know is this a case of parental alienation uh, or is this a case of realistic estrangement and courts can be very confused when looking at these cases out of the gates and so to figure it out 
there's really a couple of different ways courts can often go about trying to figure this out. Obviously, you know, way one would be to have a guardian ad litem appointed who's an attorney uh, who represents the kids and they do an investigation. So they talk to the parents, uh, they talk to the kids, they talk to other third party witnesses, could be doctors, school teachers, neighbors, friends, family members, you name it. And, and they try to decipher, okay, the kids don't want to see mom or they don't want to see dad, but what's the reason? Is it that the, the one parent is poisoning the well with the kids or is it a situation where that's not taking place at all, but the one parent is just doing things that estrange the kids from them? right typically physical or emotional abuse so that would be way one in some cases a psychologist has to be appointed in a custody evaluation takes place so more thorough analysis and in, in these situations a psychologist oftentimes has the parents engage in psychological testing and maybe does the same with the kids again interviews the parties interviews the kids interviews third-party witnesses but it has this component of psychology in addition to it right where there's psychological testing and and look in a lot of cases uh, this is needed to really decipher whether or not it's parental alienation or whether or not it's realistic estrangement it can be very confusing out of the gates for a lot of courts okay and so then the next question that often comes up is what to do when there's realistic estrangement so let's assume it's realistic estrangement and it's not parental alienation, what are courts to do in these situations? Now look, obviously every case is different. The facts of the case call for different resolutions. Some judges may view this differently than other judges as well. Some guardian ad litems uh, can be in the same boat where they have their own perspective on this. But in a general sense, typically, at least from what I've seen, where there's estrangement, uh, parenting classes might be needed. So the parent who's engaging in behavior that's physically or emotionally abusive, they oftentimes have to take parenting classes in order to better their parenting skills, okay? Uh, oftentimes, maybe they need to go to a counselor, you know, get some counseling. Uh, could be a situation where maybe they need to take anger management training, you know, something like that. The problem, though, is, is this really requires a parent who takes ownership for their behavior. In other words, they concede that it's inappropriate and they work hard in parenting classes or counseling to be better parents, okay? So that would be you know, one potential solution. Obviously work with the parent who's falling short, try to rehabilitate them and make them a better parent. Obviously the other piece that comes into play with this is the kids oftentimes they counseling too. If they've been subjected to physical or emotional abuse from an abusive parent, oftentimes they have suffered uh, emotionally and physically and they need to work with a counselor and get themselves in a place where they want to see that parent again and spend regular time with that parent again okay sometimes this works sadly in, in some circumstances it doesn't it could be a situation where the one parent is just not improving uh, and it could be a situation on the flip end where the kids aren't willing to forgive Okay, the hope is that all of that can take place where there's realistic estrangement. The one parent becomes a better parent. The kids get counseling and they want to see that parent and there's some sort of reunification, but it's not always the case, okay? And so in these circumstances, courts can be put in really challenging places. And, you know, in some cases, courts, you know, might want the kids to see that parent or they might order it. The dilemma is if the kids really truly don't want to go, you know, sometimes they can engage in behavior which is problematic, like they could run away. Uh, maybe they engage in self-harm. Uh, maybe they begin uh, engaging in substance abuse uh, because they're so distraught or upset about being in an environment that's not conducive to their upbringing, okay? And there could be other problems as well. So it's real tricky in terms of whether or not uh, the kids can be forced to go or whether or not, you know, that's a bad idea and ultimately the kids, you know, you know, maybe shouldn't be over there. You know, one of the things uh, that can often take place in, in cases of realistic estrangement as well is supervised visitation. And, you know, it could be the supervised visitation is temporary. So the kids see that parent with a supervisor there. Uh, to ensure the visits are productive and healthy and that there's no further abuse. 
uh, and then as the visits get better and better and better and the relationship gets more and more repaired, then, then maybe the visits are no longer supervised. In some cases, uh, a parent's visitation might be supervised indefinitely or maybe supervised permanently. Now, one of the questions individuals ask is, well, who supervises? And look, that's gonna vary based on the jurisdiction. Um, you know, there can be, in some courts, the ability to, to have various personnel uh, that work for the courts to supervise the visits. Uh, there are also individuals who work as private supervisors out there. Uh, oftentimes these are individuals who are social workers or counselors or you know people who maybe worked for protective services or family services in the past and they do supervised visits okay so that could be the situation in, in certain circumstances too it could be that a friend or family member is appointed as a supervisor so a little bit less restrictive um, but still supervised by somebody to make sure that the visits are supervised, okay? So I wanted to cover this topic about what realistic estrangement is. It's, it's widely unknown. It's sort of remarkable. Like I say, most individuals are very familiar with the concept of parental alienation, but they're just in the dark as to the opposite scenario of realistic estrangement. And it's, you know, a real quandary in some cases out of the gates to figure out which it is. Of course, you know, parents who are engaging in abusive behavior, whether it's physical or emotional, and let's say the kids don't want to see them, almost, I should say always, but oftentimes, they will accuse the other parent of alienating and say it's the other parent's fault that the kids don't want to see me, when in fact, it's actually their fault. There is no alienation. They're just not able to see what they're doing, and maybe they don't have good parenting skills in order to ensure they have a good, healthy, and productive relationship with the kids, all right? So look, that's the topic today. Again, go on over to FamilyLawHeadquarters.com, read the article dated August 18th, 2024. The title of that article is What is Realistic Estrangement? It'll get you more information on this topic. Thanks for tuning in today. Stay tuned to our next episode of Family Law Talk coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Family Law Talk with Kirk Stangy. Visit stangylawfirm.com for more about today's topic or to put Stangy Law Firm to work for your family today. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. Neither the Supreme Court of Missouri or Illinois reviews or approves certifying organizations or specialist designations. The information you obtained in this podcast is not, nor is it intended to be, legal advice. You should consult an attorney for advice regarding your individual situation. We invite you to contact us and welcome your calls, letters, and electronic mail. Contacting us does not create an attorney-client relationship. Please do not send any confidential information to us until such time as an attorney-client relationship has been established. Past results afford no guarantee of future results and every case is different and must be judged on its own merits. Kirk Stangy is responsible for the content. Headquarters, Office 120 South Central Avenue, Suite 450 Clayton, Missouri 63105. Kirk Stangy is licensed in Missouri, Illinois, and Kansas.